Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Academic Student Spreadsheet Bundle. This is a planner that I sell in my digital template shop. If you haven't purchased this planner, I will leave a link in the description box below so you can go ahead and grab your copy. The first tab is the instructions tab. Here you'll find my contact information as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to use this template. The second tab is the setup tab. And here is where you would add your courses. So your course ID, the type of assignment or task or activity, so this could be exams, tests, homework, lab reports, presentation, etc. You can change everything here. The only thing that I would caution you not to change is anything that is in this grade area. This is because this specific words have been built into the formula. So if you change them, some of the formulas will not work the way they're supposed to. Next would be grade. So I have included the most common grading system, but you can always delete it completely and add your own. I also included the grade points because one of the sheets in this template would allow you to calculate your GPA for the semester and your overall GPA. Feel free to adjust this to fit the specific grade points that go with the grades for your own institution. The next would be status, and this is just to keep track of your task status. Of course, don't touch the cell that has been grayed out. Next, we have semester. So if your school system is divided into semesters, you can go ahead and use these. Or if it's different, you can change it to whatever works for you. And the last is the task categories. This is for the time blocking calendar. And I'll show you how that works when we get to that tab. Everything here can be edited, like I said before, except for the words that are specified in the gray area. And you have a lot of room to add lots of courses to this template. But if you have run out of room and you want to add more, just let me know and I'll show you how to adjust it. The next tab is the assignment tracker. And as you can see here, because we have filled out the setup area, we can now go ahead and select the course, the type of task related to that course. You can type in the name of the assignment, the start date, the due date, and this calculates the days left automatically. This is a column you don't want to touch and it's grayed out. And I'm going to show you what happens if I try to delete or type something over that cell. You see this pop up and this is telling you that the part of the sheet that you're about to type into has a formula. Just hit cancel to go back. The next is the status. So select the appropriate status for that course. And after you have completed the assignment and your grade is back, you can go ahead and assign a grade to that task. And of course you have a little area for notes. Now let's go over the mini dashboard. The first part of this mini dashboard is where you can select the status of the assignment. So if I were to select not started, it tells me I have one task or one assignment that I haven't started. In addition to that, it also highlights the task right here. As you can see, I have one task with a status of not started and it highlights it. If I wanted to see how many assignments that I had scheduled, I can change this to scheduled and it tells me I have three tasks that have been scheduled. And if I look down here, I do have the three tasks scheduled automatically highlights it here for me. The next is a way to view task based on the due date. If you click on this arrow, you have the option to filter by due today, due tomorrow and overdue. Let's click on overdue because there are some tasks that are overdue here. And once we click on that, it does two things. The first thing is that it shows us the tasks that are overdue. So today's date is August 6th and this task is August 3rd and this task is August 2nd. So they're obviously overdue. In addition to that, it will highlight the task down here. Now, because this task is overdue and scheduled instead of showing up as yellow, it shows up as brown. Moving on to the course grades, here's a summary of your grades. This pie chart is based on the grades that you have here. And this graph shows you the number of assignments per course, and this is based on the number of entries here. And finally, the last graph shows you the status, how many completed, pending, not started, in progress, etc. A few other things that you can do. So let's say that you have completed a course and you wanted to clean out your spreadsheet. You can use this checkbox to cross it off. And what this does that it removes it from the number of assignments per course, as well as the assignment status, but that information is maintained in the course grade. So the course grade pie chart is always is a true reflection of all of the courses and all of your assignments that you have inputted into this template. Let's say that this list gets really long. One way to clean it up would be to use this filter. So now that we've checked these ones off because they are completed, what we can do now is use this filter. Okay. There's this little arrow next to the icon here. Click on that. First thing we want to do is clear it. And now we want to choose false. False means the checkbox has not been checked. True means the checkbox is checked. And once we do that, 
we do get this message, but because we're only using the filter option and we're not changing any of the formulas, we can go ahead and just say, don't show this again for five minutes and click OK. Once we do this, now we have a cleaner sheet that does not have any of the information that has been completed. In addition to filtering the checkbox area, you can filter by whatever column that you want. So if you wanted to see all your exams, for example, you can click on this filter, clear all, click on exam, click OK, and now you only have the exam showing up. Please note that using this filter will not change the composition of this chart and this chart. The only thing that does that is when you actually check it off. This is just hiding the cells or collapsing the rows so that you can easily see the information that you want to display. The next tab is the calendar tab. This tab is populated from the assignments tracker. So everything that we enter here, shows up in the calendar tab. Here you have the list of the assignments and the tasks that we have entered in the assignment tracker. And then this same list shows up right here in this calendar. What's nice about this calendar is that first of all, you can select whatever day of the week you want. So if your day of the week starts on Sunday, you can change it to Sunday. It's dynamic. So everything just moves around accordingly. And of course it's reusable. So you can use it for whatever year you want and for whatever month you want. If September rolls around, all you need to do is to change it to September. And then it shows you the assignments due for September. Right now we don't have any assignments entered in for September. So the calendar is blank. If I were to go back to the assignment tracker and let's add some start dates and due dates in September back to the calendar, you can see right now the dates show up here. And if I go back to August, the tasks show up here as well. This calendar is fully dynamic. The other thing I want to point out with this calendar is that you can decide to show only your exams. So if you look up here, you see that this says show only exams. If I click on this checkbox, only the exams show up here. As you can see here, it only shows the task that we have assigned to an exam in the task tracker. And if I were to cross an exam off, so let's say I cross these two off here. If we go back to the calendar, it also removes it from the calendar as well as the scratch off area. The sticky note area is a list of all of your activities and assignments, but in a list form and how to use it would be to help you sort of keep track of everything that you need to do. If you have completed a task, you can go ahead and just cross it off and it also crosses it off in your calendar. Anything you do here will not affect this part of the template. This is just a way to keep track of the things that have been done. Before you move on to the next month, you will have to manually uncheck these and then start adding your activities for the next month. The next tab is your weekly planning calendar. And this is a weekly time block to plan your entire day in 30 minute increments. The first thing you want to do is to set up your year, your months, the day of the week you want to start and the hour you want to start planning your day. So you select the year, select the month, select the day of the week you want to start. Let's say you like to start your week on Monday, go ahead and select Monday. And here you can select the hour. So it's 8 a.m. But if you want to start planning your day earlier, let's say 5 a.m. or 4 a.m., whatever time you want to start planning your day, go ahead and select it. So let's select 6 a.m. Once you do this, it automatically adjusts the time here. And here is the current month based on what we have selected here. Here are the different task categories, but we'll come back to this a little bit. And here is where you can add additional tasks. But please know that this time blocking calendar is not connected to the assignment tracker. The assignment tracker only works with the calendar. The weekly planning calendar allows you to time block every single hour of your day. All right, so here is where the categories come in. So if you remember in the setup tab, we had to add some task categories. Here is where we're going to use them. The task categories that we have entered here applies to this template. In order to set up the weekly time blocking area, first we wanna select the week start date. To do this, double click on this date here and then select the dates that you wanna start planning your week. I'm gonna select August 5th. So once we do this, you can see August 5th shows up here sixth, seventh, and all the way through the 11th of August. So this entire column represents one day from 6 a.m. all the way down to start planning your day. Now you can go ahead and select the category. So you have these 10 categories that you can change by going to the setup area. When you receive your template, this part of the template will be blank. I will go ahead and delete it just to show you how it would look like when you purchase it. Okay, so you can highlight the entire cell 
and click delete because there are no formulas in this specific part of the template you should be able to delete it without having any problems to start planning we're going to go ahead and select the category so let's say we're going to start at our morning routine at 6 a.m all the way through 7 30 a.m so we're going to select morning routine and then you can type in the morning routine activity so let's say the first thing would be to do meditation and you would type it up here let's say you wanted to repeat an activity you could always copy it paste it here let's say the next category is school we have selected school but we really want school to go all the way from 8 a.m to about 1 p.m so now we're going to just select the cell so click on copy or Control c or command c on your keyboard and now we're going to select the entire area okay till about one o'clock now right click click on values only it's important you do this because this will make sure that the formatting is maintained and nothing else changes so we're going to click on values only and as you can see none of the cells change if i were to paste it normally it pastes the border which messes up the formatting of the cell so just make sure that if you're going to be copying a cell content to paste it in several cells at the same time use paste values only and that way it only pastes the content without messing up the formatting then you can go ahead and type the different activities that you want to do in that time block this section right here automatically calculates how many hours you've assigned to each category so every single time you assign a category to each day in this part of the template it calculates the hours okay so when you're assigning your different categories and activities to your time block you can come back over here and assess how many hours and the percentage there are that you are assigning to each category and of course the progress bar is a reflection of this percentage down here is where you would add additional tasks so other things that you want to keep track of that are not assignments and that are not the daily activities so you have additional space that you can put additional weekly tasks assuming that we have moved on to the next week we would go ahead and change the date so we're going to change it to august 12th and nothing is going to change here because this is a fixed static calendar so you would go ahead and change the activities or leave them the same if they still apply so let's say for this week you only want to do two hours of meditation you'll go ahead and delete those two hours and then reassign this category to whatever category you wanted to assign it to so it gives you the flexibility of changing the different categories and the activities every single week the next tab is the grade and gpa tracker here you would select the semester the year the course type in your course name select the credit hours select your expected grade so if you haven't received your final grade yet you can select the grade that you think you would get for that course assign your final grade and this automatically calculates this grade point is connected to the grade points here so this is not the grade and grade points used by your school or your institution just make sure you change it to the appropriate grade and grade points all right so once you have entered all of your courses here it will display your gpa for each semester so based on all the courses we have entered here for fall 2024 the gpa is 3.5 in spring 3.4 summer 3.7 and the next fall 3.5 if you want to view the ga for each time period you would select the semester here fall 2024 and you can see the gpa is 3.5 it also shows you that you took eight courses in the fall of 2020 as well as completed 26 credit hours this part here calculates your overall gpa so all of the courses that you have entered in this template is used to calculate the overall gpa here the next tab is where you'll keep track of all the books and all the resources that you're going to need to study. If your currency is not dollar, go ahead and delete the currency here and type in your own specific currency. All right, changing this back to dollar. And then next, you'll go ahead and enter the course, the semester, the year, the date that the resource or textbook is due, the name of the resource, where you're going to get it from. This is a drop down that has automatically been populated. If you want to add something to this list, go ahead and click on this edit button and add another item to this list. Or you can go ahead and edit this list directly here. Next, you have the date you purchased it, how much you purchased it and the status. Here's another list that you can adjust based on your specific needs. So we have order, receive, borrowed, returned and other. If you want to change this go ahead and click on this edit button and you can change it here or add an additional item and the last column is where you will add whatever note you want tied to that specific resource once you've completed the table down here you can select the course name so let's just select cs 101 and then highlights it down here for you 
This cell shows you how much you spent overall. So for all the courses that we have answered, we sent about $1,770. Here you can select your semester. So let's say spring of 2024, and it shows you how many books you've purchased and how much money you've spent. And of course, this information is based on the information you've answered here. So because we haven't entered any information for spring 2024, everything is zero. So let's say we change it to spring 2025 because we do have textbooks that we have purchased based on this date. So I'll change this to 2025. And as you can see, it says we purchased five books and this is how much we spent and the most expensive book and the least expensive book. This shows you how many books you have purchased overall. And here's the list of your top four most expensive books. Last but not least, we have a habit tracker. Now this habit tracker will be included as a separate file as well. So you can use it separately from this bundle if you don't want to use it within this template. And the way this works is that you would select to start date by double clicking on this cell and let's change it to August 1st. And then you'll type in all of your habits here. And also you'll type in your weekly habits here and your monthly habits. And then as you complete the habits, of course, go ahead and check the boxes. And when you get to the end of the week and you have completed all of your habits, you will get a star and you can keep track of how many stars that you have completed per week. Right here, you can see your monthly progress. And down here, you can track your weekly habits. And here you can track your weekly progress and the number of habits completed and the percentage of habits completed in that week. Okay, here you can see your monthly progress for the week as well as your weekly progress right here. And the last section right here shows you your top seven habits and you can use this space to type in your rewards. All right, so that brings me to the end of this complete walkthrough. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. You could also leave a comment in the comment section below or you can send me a message through Etsy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.